Shining a bright red, as always, is I Red Luster. So, you want to know how to play Darkest Dungeon? Have you been thinking about getting it, or maybe you're afraid of diving in? Or maybe you have it, but you're having troubles enjoying it. Well, I'm going to tell you the best way to play Darkest Dungeon. Just don't. Yep. Surprise, this isn't a video of how to play Darkest Dungeon, or how to enjoy it, but rather why you shouldn't even bother. Darkest Dungeon is one of those games that look great, the content made around them is great, but the game itself is terrible, almost like Dead by Daylight, though not a one-for-one -one comparison. So why shouldn't you play Darkest Dungeon? Well, there's three main reasons I think Darkest Dungeon is a game that will more often than not leave you frustrated, bored, and unsatisfied. These three main reasons is gameplay, management, and grinding. I know you could probably fit all three of these all into the same category as gameplay, but I'm referring to dungeons themselves in that regard. You know, gameplay being dungeons. So. Starting with gameplay, Darkest Dungeon doesn't lie when it says you will suffer, but it's not the fun kind of suffering like you get in Dark Souls. No, in Dark Souls, you actually have agency to your situations. When you die in Dark Souls, it's almost always your fault. Being observant of your surroundings and having good technical skill will prevent you from dying most of the time. Only rarely will Dark Souls throw a cheap shot at you, and even then, dying isn't too punishing as you can always reclaim your lost progress, so long as you can make it back there in one piece, which, you know, just be more careful. You know, just when you're going back to your stuff, don't run headlong and try to get it as soon as possible, like, just slow down, keep your shield up, and mosey your way there, get it back, and then you can die. At least either die a little bit closer to where you're trying to get to, or at least die a little closer to the last bonfire so you can get your stuff back. When it comes to Darkest Dungeon, however, it's as wild as a slot machine. Everything, just everything, is dictated by the almighty and merciless god that all gamers have to pray to. RNG, also known as Random Number Generator, which just means randomness. Will your attack hit or miss? RNG. Will the enemy be hit or do they dodge? RNG. Will you get a crit? RNG. Will the enemy get a crit? RNG. What items you find? RNG. Disarming traps? Doesn't matter how good your grave robber is, there's still a 10% chance they're gonna fail, so it's RNG. How about if you just lose items randomly because your character is a freaking idiot for losing it when they're de-stressing? That's random too. Will this next attack that will kill that one annoying enemy or will they survive another five turns causing stress damage? You know who I'm referring to. RNG. What damage you even do get when you get the hit? RNG. Same goes for healing. You don't know how much health you're gonna get back when you go for a heal because they give you a general amount, not an actual amount. So pretty much everything in Darkest Dungeon comes down to basic luck, to the point where there are videos of people facing the final boss with some of the weakest characters because they get really good luck and just dodge everything. And why people can be absolutely loaded to the teeth, ready for anything, ready for anything the final boss can throw at them, only to die at the doorstep. Speaking of dying, Death in Darkest Dungeon is permanent. If a character dies, that's it. They are gone for good. All that training and trying desperately to keep good traits whilst getting rid of some of the game ruining ones? All lost. But hey, at least you get to keep their gear. That is, after you make room for it in your inventory, which means you're probably going to have to drop some of the very resources you came out here to get in the dungeon. There are so many things dictated by random chance, practically every little mechanic, and there's just so much random stuff that just happens for no reason. Like, like you're just walking down a hallway and all of a sudden one of your characters just gets stressed. Like... The torch is at full light, you're at full health, what are you getting stressed about? 
And and those kind of, those kind of little, little events can add up, but we could talk all day about how much randomness in Darkest Dungeon there is. Let's just move on to the next point. The next thing we're going to talk about is management. Darkest Dungeon has a lot of things you need to juggle at once. From training characters you'll need later, to getting the right items on said characters. But it all pales in comparison to the most boring thing you have to manage. Stress. Yep. Stress in Darkest Dungeon is one of its biggest selling points, one of its main mechanics, and it's one of the worst parts of the game to manage. See, stress damage is different like health. It doesn't heal the same way. Now, only certain skills or spending time and money back at the Hamlet, your main base, can you get rid of it. And if a character is very stressed, they'll often need more than one or two trips to get back to being useful. When a character reaches 100 stress, they'll break down and suffer a very negative effect that will not stop until they reach zero stress again. And if they reach 200? Say goodbye! They're instantly dead! No, there's no, no, no death checks, no nothing, do not go past go and collect 200. They are dead on the spot. Now, there is a small chance to be virtuous when they reach 100 stress, which does cause them to lose a lot of that stress and get a bonus instead. But it's so unlikely to happen that the girl or guy of your dreams arriving at your front door is considerably more likely. Not to mention everything causes stress damage. Enemies can do stress attacks. Enemies getting crits on their attacks does stress to the entire team. If a teammate has a stressful event at 100 stress, a lot of the time, their negative effect will cause more stress to the team. Being at death's door can stress them out. Teammates dying will stress out the rest of them. Random events can cause stress. Some of your own moves will stress out your team. Being in the dark can cause stress. Heck, sometimes characters will just take stress damage for no reason. You can just be walking down the hallway, full torchlight, and bam, just stress damage out of nowhere. It's just like... Why? The thing is, stress is so tedious to get rid of, but it's so extremely easy to get. Even if you went through a dungeon where nobody got hurt, can still result in the team being fairly stressed out at the end. Like, I just imagine one of them being like, hey, I made it through that massive crypt without taking a single scratch on me, but that guy yelling gibberish at me, might just be the thing that kills me, because boy howdy, having a heart attack because old man Jenkins is screaming at me makes so much sense. It's, you know, old man, you have a point rambling about the end of the universe, I'll just end it for myself right here. I'll just have a heart attack and die. Doesn't matter I'm at peak physical health, Just I'll just fall over. The other boring things you have to often manage is money and heirlooms, which you'll always feel like you don't have enough of. You're always spending money almost as fast as you're getting it, either using it to de-stress characters, buying them better equipment, or spending tons of it on supplies you need to go on the very trips to the dungeons themselves. Heirlooms are needed to upgrade the Hamlet so you can even have access to most of the stuff you need, like higher tier equipment upgrades, better recruits, better stress management facilities, Better medical facilities. Speaking of which, illnesses and traits. We're still in management. Characters over time will get positive and negative traits. Which as you can guess, the negative traits are not only more likely to be obtained, but can worsen so that they're harder to remove. Removing them, however, is still possible, but as you can guess, it costs more money and more time. Illnesses are just like negative traits, however they can be rather terrible enough to the point of making some characters just no longer worth using so long as they have it. They too can be treated, but just like everything else, it costs time and money, and illnesses can be gotten in the middle of a dungeon, which can lead to them dying in some cases if it's a really bad one. There's nothing worse than getting a disease that makes your character just not hit anything, and then for the rest of the dungeon, they just whiff every attack. 
The main issue with illnesses, native tra uh, traits, and de-stressing is that they force you to stop using the character for a whole mission just to resolve one action. What's worse is that they can easily get multiple issues in one adventure like high stress, diseases, and negative traits, which all require their own individual visits to stations to get them fixed. This whole system usually leads you to start grabbing new people and just immediately throwing them away once they start showing any signs they're losing their usefulness while pumping up your main crew in the background. Which moves us on to the last part, grinding. So much time in Darkest Dungeon is spent doing just this. About 90% of your gameplay is just grinding. You're grinding for money, heirlooms, levels, characters, trinkets, only to lose most of either of these by spending it on things that you need, or having characters you put so much time into improving only for them to perish because the game decides for it to happen. So much of this game is just grabbing random recruits, throwing them into dungeons with barely anything, and then throwing them away once they come back because trying to manage their needs would spend all the stuff you threw them out for there to get in the first place. Even with this cycle, you're usually not getting enough of the stuff you need, so you have to do it over and over and over again. And when you're finally ready to make actual progress? Well, let's hope it's a flawless run and you don't lose anyone. Otherwise, you'll have to grind to get someone new to replace them. You, and the thing is, replacing a character is not that easy, because as you're leveling them up, they're going to get both positive, negative traits, and stress, which means they have to spend more and more time in the, uh, the Hamlet to just get the, rid of the bad things that screw the character over and keep the good things that make the character viable and using. And then there's also items, which... Let's be honest, the items in Darkest Dungeon are terrible because most of them have downsides to them that just make them... Like, they're not even upgrades most of the time. Like, a majority of the trinkets you find are not upgrades. They're just side grades, which I get for balancing purposes, but it makes using items feel bad because, like, I don't want to use a thing that makes me better if it means I have to spend twice as much time de-stressing because the downside is more stress. It's an endless slog that can at random become longer and longer just because the game deems it to happen. Getting negative traits is random. Getting illnesses is random. How much the character de-stresses after treatment? Random. I mean, sometimes characters will just straight up go missing or stay, stay longer at de-stressors, wasting time because haha ha, funny RNG making bad things happen is Fun, but with all that out of the way, let's recap as to why I don't think Darkest Dungeon is something you should probably get into. Darkest Dungeon isn't enjoyable to play because most of its gameplay is random, something that you don't have any real agency in, so it really just feels like the game screws you over whenever it feels like it. Or the opposite, sometimes they'll just let you get away with stupid stuff, which can be fun, but it the amount of times where it screws you over rather than helps you is much more. Its management is tedious, requiring countless hours of grinding to make any sort of progress. Progress that you can easily lose just to some bad luck. Now with that all being said, I have nothing against the people that do enjoy Darkest Dungeon. Power, all the power to them. However, I would recommend that most people avoid playing it that most of their interest in the game will die when you actually get into the game. Or worse, they'll be like me, they'll try to force themselves to keep playing to see why people love playing it. If it weren't for this game's art style and atmosphere, I'm sure of a lot of a people would just ignore it, save for those who just enjoy suffering. And not like the Dark Souls kind of suffering, like I've already been over that. Dark Souls suffering is fun. Darkest Dungeon suffering is just miserable. Regardless, this is my take of the game, why I don't play it, and why I think others should probably try playing something else, and why I don't plan on making any more content on it, save for this video explaining why. It's... The videos can be fun to enjoy, but playing the game itself is such a painful slog that it's just... It's just it's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember to do the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, and 
share with this with your friends. There's plenty I didn't get to talk about in this video, but as is, it's already plenty long enough. So if you have any other points you want to bring up about why Darkest Dungeon isn't fun, or why you might have points the contrary, which go ahead and share them in the comment section below. This has been Red Luster, signing out.